So here it is, my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K rig. That's always a mouthful to say, but after about a year and a half of using this since it came out, I decided to actually take that plunge, make it work for me instead of me kind of working around some of the negatives of this camera. And I'm loving this thing. Twenty twenty wasn't a great year for a lot of things, but it was a great year for new cameras. There were so many different options and options that I had been waiting for. In a lot of ways, I picked up the 6K as kind of a holdover for whatever came next. But those cameras came, I tried them, I tried the R5, I tried the A7S III, I even had a Stormtrooper Komodo on pre-order, but I canceled it last minute. And that's because I, you know, I took a step back and thought about what I really needed from a camera and realized the 6K does pretty much all of it. And the things that it didn't do and I needed to fix, I could easily rig it out and save a lot of money. Now the elephant in the room here is, of course, Blackmagic just released the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro, adding on to that already long name. And I have it here, so if you want to see more videos on this, maybe a direct comparison or something like that, be sure to subscribe and let me know down below in the comments. The 6K Pro does fix some of the issues that I added here to this rig, but even still, you're probably going to want to rig out your Pro or your 6K or even your 4K to give you the most out of a camera. All right, so let's go over what I have actually done. And there's really like two ways you can go about this. You have to start with a cage so that you can mount all this other stuff to it. And you can either go the small rig route or you can go the tilt route. I had the small rig cage on my 4K and the 6K before I upgraded everything else, but I decided to try out the tilt just because honestly, I kind of like the way it looks. And there's a few more accessories with it and a few more mounting points that I think just b better suit this camera. But honestly, once you pick which cage you want, the rest of the accessories are very similar. So if you look at other people's rigs, like a lot of the stuff here is very much the same, but it, there's a few little touches here that I've done to, you know, work for what I need. So the first thing I'll talk about is right up front, the map box. This is the Polar Pro Base Camp. You may have heard of it before. They just released the updated version to this. They were nice enough to send this out for me to check out and I'm loving it so far. I think on first glance for most people, a map box is really just something that looks cool, which definitely does. And it makes your camera look a little bit more professional, but that alone does not make the price of a map box worth it. You actually need some functionality here and this provides it. The name of the game with this particular map box is the weight. It's extremely lightweight, so you don't really feel it once it's on your camera. And it still gives you all the other functionality that you want. So you have a little flag here at the front so you can not only protect your lens, but also cover the camera. You also have these drop in filters and you can choose which ones you want. I have a two to five stop ND right here. And Polar Pro has just released a few different versions of their filters. So they have a mist, which I'm a big fan of. They also have a blue morphic, which gives you these light streaks, almost like an anamorphic lens. It's a really cool effect. And with the updated base camp, you can actually stack filters to get multiple effects. It's a great little system here. It's a little bit of an investment up front and probably, if I'm being honest, wouldn't be the first thing I buy from my whole camera. But once you have it, the utility is definitely real. Behind that is the lens, and this pretty much lives here. I rarely take it off. I shoot almost everything on it. It's the Canon 24 to 105. I love this lens because it's just a great range. From 24 all the way to 105, you can cover almost everything. Now, the only downside with it is it is an F4, so if you get into low light, that doesn't work very well. Another big reason I love this lens is the stabilization is excellent. So if I'm going handheld, I don't have to worry about shakes quite as much, and then actually making the camera bigger means the stabilization and combination with the weight. This provides for a really smooth operating experience. But the actual quality of the image is great and you get a ton of coverage. So that pretty much lives here. Although of course, depending on the shots, I will switch it out for like the 18 to 35 or a 70 to 200 or something like that, just depending on what I'm shooting. But this by far is my favorite lens for this camera. Now this whole thing is sitting on a rod system from Tilta and it's using 12 inch rods from small rig. I went for the carbon version. One thing I was not happy with before I created this is my rig was going tall. So I'd have the battery on the bottom and have the camera on top, a monitor on top of that. And suddenly I have a really tall camera system and I just didn't like that. The ergonomics weren't great. It was a little top heavy. So I wanted to make the camera long. So that's what these rods let me do. And everything that is attached here that needs power, which is 
pretty much everything is running off a V mount battery. So with this one single V mount battery, I can power the camera, I can power my monitor, I can power my wireless transmitter and my follow focus all with this one battery and it runs for a few hours. So I have a nice all-in-one rig where I can just swap this one battery and not have to touch anything else, which I really like. The V-mount plate is from Indie Pro, and the only reason I got this one is because it swivels so I can access the touchscreen. Now in reality, I rarely use the screen on the back. The only time is to change my frame rate from 24 to 60, and that I can pretty much do without even moving this thing out of the way because it's up in the corner, and I can use it with the buttons as well. But for those off times, it's nice to just be able to get this thing out of the way, swivel it out of the way, and access the touchscreen. Also pro tip, if you are covering the screen like this, make sure you go into the camera and turn the brightness down on the screen so you're not wasting battery. When mine is on, you can actually barely tell it's on. That's because I'm using the monitor up here for that. Speaking of monitor, I'm using the Ninja 5 right now. Excellent monitor, although I probably wouldn't recommend it if you're looking to buy a new one specifically for a 6K, only because it's a recorder and you don't necessarily need that with this camera, but it's what I had. It's excellent quality. And I attached it here to the front of the handle so it's not, again, so tall. I really wanna avoid having this camera be tall. So the wider I can get it, the better. Now the monitor is getting the signal from the camera, obviously, but I also have it going out to the Hollyland Mars 400S. This is a wireless transmitter, so I can transmit what I'm seeing from the camera to a screen without having anything connected. I've done a full video on the Mars 400 and I love it. Once you start using one of these, it's very hard to go back to actually plugging in like an HDMI cable, but I've attached it here with Velcro and it was a little hard to figure out how to actually get this here, especially since occasionally I do want to take this this off if either I'm not using it or if I'm going to use it with a different camera. So my solution for that was to use an NPF battery, which is what it typically runs off of, but use that as the mounting point. So I stuck the NPF battery to the V mount plate with Velcro, and then I can easily detach the Mars 400 from that battery as if I was plugging in the battery. I think it's a pretty decent solution. The battery doesn't really add any weight and you could hollow it out if you wanted to. This is just a dead one that I had lying around. So works for me. And then, like I said, all of this is running off that V-mount. So the wireless transmitter, the Ninja, the follow focus is all plugged in over D-tap, again, getting powered by the V-mount. Now, the last thing is the side handles slash follow focus. The follow focus is the Tilted Nucleus Nano, which I, I think this is just the one that you should buy if you're looking for a starter follow focus. It's performed exactly the way I needed it to. I haven't figured out anything that it doesn't do. So I'm really happy with that system and it is small and sits on the rail, no problem out of the way. But instead of controlling it with the dial that it comes with, and you know, I've seen people put those on these rigs. I've never really figured out how you're supposed to focus the camera and hold the camera at the same time. I've never liked that. So instead, I went for the tilt to side handle, which has a focus controller built in. So there's a little dial up front, which you can tilt and it will adjust the camera. So that way I can hold the camera with two hands and still focus the lens. So it makes it much more ergonomic. I get more stable footage with that. And this side handle is definitely a must. Now Tilta makes a bunch of different side handles, but this one in particular is great because you can put in a T5 drive here, which is what I record everything to. So all you have to do is slide in your drive and everything goes there nice and out of the way. The only issue with the side handle is it makes the camera a little wide. And there are some times where I just don't need the handle. So for that, I have attached a NATO rail, which lets me easily slide this handle on and off. So if I'm not using the handle, then I don't have to have it here. But having this handle has really changed how I shoot with this camera. So that's the entire rig, but there's one more key point. One thing I was really worried about when I did this is that now the camera's big, so it's gonna be heavy. It comes in around 12 pounds, which I was kind of of the assumption that, you know, 12 pounds is kind of nothing. You can pick up 12 pounds easily. But then I went on a shoot with this camera and was holding it for a few hours. And let me tell you, it's not fun. So you're gonna want some sort of support system here. And for me, I'm using the Easy Rig Mini Max. I only use this when I'm actually gonna be using the camera for a long time. I don't need to attach it every single time. The camera's not that heavy, but luckily Easy Rig has made this cheaper option for the price. It actually is well worth it. it takes the load off your back and your arms so you can support the camera a lot more easily. 
But yeah, that is my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K rig. And I have solved every issue that I had with the camera. I can now focus easily. I have a good monitor that tilts. I have wireless transmitter. I have battery life. Everything I need is here. And honestly, I'm not really looking to get another camera anytime soon. This thing is performing exactly the way I need it to. It's giving me stellar footage and I'm just really happy with it.